the vast majority of people would be a lot better off if they just didn't take supplements. Mm. If they just focused in on, it, you know, say you've got a hundred dollars a month to to spend on your health. If you're spending that on supplements rather than, you know, at home gym equipment or yeah, a gym membership or high quality foods, um, you know, th- that's where the th- that's where you can make a massive difference to your health. It's your diet, your exercise, your sleep. Supplements is is the icing on the cake. Um, but but you need to build up that cake. You've publicly shared that you stopped taking NMN. Can we talk about that for a minute and uh, where your um, where your opinions on that that drug changed? This is quite similar to resveratrol in that when I first started my channel and looking into the supplement world, um, I started taking NMN because of what other people were doing, which is an idiotic thing to do. I didn't do my research properly. Um, and again, when I looked into the research at the time, there was only one human study. And that one human study was just giving NMN once to people to make sure that there weren't any significant side effects. Hmm. That was the only human study. Wow. Yet I was taking NMN at the time. Now, subsequently, there's been, I, I want to say about 18 to 20 human randomized studies. The, the trouble is, when you look at these studies, that they don't seem to have a, a marked in terms of any men, that it doesn't seem to have a marked effect. So they've looked at mood, they've looked at exercise, um, you know, they've looked at cholesterol, they've looked at heart health. There doesn't seem to be much effect. So, so, and and what I mean by that is, some studies will suggest yes, maybe there's something here, but then another study will say no, actually, there's no effect. So, so you've got these conflicting results, and part of the reason for why these results are so conflicting is that often the studies are small. And they're funded by supplement companies. And like I mentioned before, you just need to be careful about who's funding these studies because they can massage the data to, to fit the narrative. And, and the narrative generally is for a supplement company is that they want to show that their supplement works and that will drive sales. So you just need to be careful. When um, I think it was about three months ago, I did a deep dive into all of the human studies and, and created a table basically saying, you know, uh, looking, at the, looking at all of the different measures um, in the human clinical studies to see, you know, are, are there any patterns here? Is there a clear benefit of exercise, a clear benefit again to heart health? And nothing is clear. So for me, there's no obvious benefit from taking NMN supplements, um, looking at the research, but there's the potential of harm. And in clinical medicine, vitamin B3, which is what NMN is, it's a type of vitamin B3. High dose vitamin B3 in the form of niacin was used to lower LDL cholesterol levels. It was thought to help to be protective against cardiovascular disease. Now, unfortunately, those studies didn't pan out. And what I mean by that is the group who was taking the high dose vitamin B3 supplements, they actually seemed to have higher rates of cardiovascular disease. They had higher rates of heart attacks. So, High dose vitamin B3 is no longer used or prescribed in, in clinical medicine um, because of the human studies that we've got. And any men in the gut seems to be converted into niacin before it's absorbed. So there's a possibility that if you're taking any men supplements, you're actually taking high dose niacin. And we know that high dose niacin seems to worsen mortality, so worsen death rates and cardiovascular disease. So uh, yeah, I, I'm I'm cautious. One of the the big points that I try and um, get across on my channel is the dangers of mega dosing. Um, if you start to ingest things that the body was not designed for, or you don't find in nature, that's when you start to really run into problems, and that's where you need to rely on human clinical studies. Are there any other supplements besides NMN that you advise people just like not good for you? <laughs> don't take this. The big ones that I think we've already mentioned, so resveratrol. Anti- well, high dose antioxidant supplements, particularly vitamin A and vitamin E. Um, there, there is another medication that's it's a, so it's a diabetic medication called metformin. So pre-diabetic patients will use metformin to help prevent developing full blown type two diabetes, and type two diabetic patients will be on metformin. The, the evidence is very clear on that. But in the in the so called longevity space, a lot of people have started taking metformin. Um, because of some initial mice research to suggest that it may extend mice lifespan. Now, if we just spend a little bit of time on that, the initial st- the initial mice studies that were done that were exciting, these mice were inbred and they had a genetic predisposition to high blood pressure. So in those selective mice, yes, there was a lifespan extension effect. But when the interventions testing program trialed um, metformin, so on the point of the intervention testing program, they run the same experiment 
um, at the same time in three separate labs, and they use genetically diverse mice. So in theory, the results from that from those mice are more applicable to humans. There was no lifespan extension effect seen. Then there was a, a study looking um, from the diabetes prevention program um, that ran for, I believe it was 18 years, that showed that those who, so non-diabetics taking metformin, compared to a placebo, there was no effect on cancer, on cardiovascular disease, on overall death rates. Um, so I'm not convinced that there's a significant benefit for, for non-diabetics taking metformin. Where did people start hearing about metformin? Yeah, it, it's an incredibly common medication. It's very, very cheap. Um, clinical medicine has been using it for decades. So when it looked like non-diabetics could potentially have these uh, um, effects in terms of lifespan extension, both from the mice studies and also from the human observational studies, it looked like type 2 diabetics who only needed metformin to control their diabetes seemed to have lower heart disease um, compared to non-diabetics. So, so that, that, again, just fueled the excitement for metformin. But that also leads into the dangers of observational studies, and that's why randomized controlled trials are critical. Because when the Diabetes Prevention Program did that study of metformin um, in non-diabetics, there, there were no effects seen. So th there's a study going on by um, a professor in the university, and it's called the TAME study. Um, so I, I'm interested to, to see the results of that. But again, in clinical medicine, we already use metformin for pre-diabetics and type 2 diabetic patients. So for me, the, the only question mark is what should non-diabetics be doing about metformin? And I'm not convinced there's any benefit, but we do have evidence of harm. So much like the antioxidant discussion, when there's been two to three studies now showing that when um, people who exercise, when they take metformin, they blunt the positive effects of exercise. So, so they're less fit compared to if they were taking a placebo. And metformin also lowers testosterone levels. So we, yeah, I, we, we just need to be careful um, about taking something with unproven benefits and known harms. Can you think of any like controversial or like stuff that you seem, that seems a little bit sketchy, you know, that, that that's being investigated right now? So, yeah, we've already talked about resveratrol and why I'm concerned about people taking that supplement, again, because of the side effects that it does have. There's a couple of other um, supplements that I think people should be aware of in terms of their side effects. So one of them is antioxidant supplements. So this is things like high-dose vitamin A, high-dose vitamin C, high-dose vitamin E. Um, particularly with vitamin A and vitamin E, from the human clinical studies that we've got at the moment, it actually seems to worsen lifespan. People seem to be dying faster if you take those high-dose supplements oh compared to if you don't. And, and that's not the only effect. So when we exercise, we release all sorts of oxidants. And that's a good thing. It signals to our body that, it, ne that they, it needs to become fitter to deal with that stress. But if you're taking antioxidant supplements, you blunt that oxidative stress. So you blunt the positive effects of exercise. And that's not just theory. That's actually been proven out in human randomized clinical trials. So what they'll do is they'll, they'll take a group of people, they'll exercise them. One group will be taking these antioxidant supplements and the other group will be taking a placebo. And at the end of the study, the group who's not taking the, the antioxidant supplements are stronger and fitter compared to the group who are taking the antioxidant supplements. So people just need to be careful about what they're putting in their body because you, you, we were sold for such a long time that antioxidants were going to be you know, wonderful for us, that they um, were going to be miracles, they were going to lower cancer rates, they were going to extend lifespan, but they, they don't seem to do that. If anything, they seem to, again, worsen muscle performance. Now, antioxidant foods... Absolutely. You know, your fruits, your vegetables, brilliant. I'm talking about supplementing specifically at high doses.